I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 21st of May, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. And today we're running out to Salinas Grandes to show you exactly what it's like in this relatively remote beach that's actually pretty close to the city of Leon. So we're gonna be right back to this beautiful location. Hopefully you can hear me over the background noise, but the background noise is waves, so there's no complaining. I'll see you after the bump. Located just a few kilometers south of the very popular tourist destinations of Ponloya and Las Penitas is Salinas Grande, which is, as the name implies, a salt production area here in the country. Uh, there is loads and loads of salt fields where they pull the ocean water in, dry them uh, out in the sun, and produce salt and saltpeter here. Uh, and it's uh, it's pretty remote because I'm going to turn the camera a little bit while well, I'm going to turn here with the camera. This is Isla Juan Venado, which if you've been following my channel for some time, you know that Las Penitas sits north of Isla Juan Venado. This is the protected reserve where they have all the egrets and the crocodiles and the uh, crabs and all kinds of things live out there because that is an estuary zone, so it's very protected. This, then, is the south side of Juan Venado. Oh, I'm going to turn the camera here because we've got fishermen heading out to sea. While this is a fishing village, it's a pretty minor one. Uh, you can see a few of the colorful boats here and some people heading out. And this is the island right there that we're looking at. <clears throat> this is the river coming in just over here. Hopefully you can see me pointing. I'm experimenting with the X3. Uh, and doing some live audio today. So I'm hoping that this comes through okay. So far, I've been pretty happy with the X3 and its audio, but from it, it's still something I'm getting used to. Overall, I'm very happy with the camera though. And pretty soon, I hope this week, I'm gonna be doing a Camera Cafe episode about it. Now, one of the most notable things about coming to Salinas Grande is that this is a pretty remote facility, uh, uh, community. Now, if you're going to get here, what you do is either you're coming from Managua, you would not likely come here from Managua just because it is a minor beach and Managua is a long way away, but that is one of the options. The other is to come here from the north, from Leon, and it is a Leon beach. It is uh, specifically it's part of the city of Leon beaches as opposed to the farther south beaches such as El Transito, which are considered, while well, part of Leon Departamento, are part of uh, La Paz Centro, so they're La Paz Centro beaches. Salinas Grande is with Ponaloya and Las Benitas, one of the three Leon City proper beaches. The other two are connected to the city. They're connected by a main road. You've seen me walk it a number of times. You've seen me drive it a number of times. You've seen it over the past two years over and over again. That's very easy. Here in Salinas Grande, you go south out of Leon for about, I want to say 20 kilometers, at which point you turn off the road onto a really rough dirt road, which I'm going to show you because you have to see it. This alone is a reason not to come here. And I hate to say that about a location in a place that I love so much, but this road is terrible. It took 40 minutes or more to come down this road in our car. It was very rough. There's no traffic. It's all extremely dry. There's nothing to see, nothing to do. It is just a terrible road. And the reason it's so bad, because you can't really tell from the video just how bad it is, is that it is all uh, it's it's basically a road that's been carved out of rock and all of the dirt and gravel that you see on top is sitting Essentially right on top of rocks. So it has no give whatsoever. It is not smooth in any way It is not soft in any way. It doesn't have loose pieces like gravel to allow you to move It is hard rocks on top of a rock and so every little thing that you hit is significant uh, and causes causes a really really rough ride uh, so it's it, so people who are coming out here, uh, quite often we actually hear that people will come out by boat uh, through Isla Juan Venado. They'll actually park in Las Benitas and come the something like 20 kilometers water direction drive, uh, or boat, I guess, that by water, 20 kilometers by water, and come here that way. And I have heard rumors of people who have walked it, which is a very long walk through some pretty remote areas. 
Uh, I don't know if I would recommend that even as a walker, but uh, the beach out here is very, very remote. So that is its draw, uh, that it is essentially a tiny, loosely associated enclave community uh, that is very far away from civilization. So if that's what you're looking for, this can be a great option, but boy, do you have to be serious about being remote. This is not in any way fooling around. A major draw of the beach here is that there is a lot of open sand. This is a big, beautiful sandy beach, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, unlike Las Bonitas to the north, there are not a lot of rocks here, hence the difference in name. Uh, this is a lot of sand. You can really run around, you can lay out, you can enjoy this beach, and it has nice rough seas. You can see this is some serious surf going on behind me. We're here on a really hazy day, so it's not yet sunset, but I, I'm not sure how much I love this light. It's kind of incredible looking at it on the screen. It is really cloudy and, and kind of hazy, but it's nice and warm. It looks pretty cold, I think. But look at that sky, look at that, that, that sea line. It is beautiful and serene out here. And there's just no one on the beach. You can see they've got a couple fishermen and Marcella down there on the beach, that's it. Like this is just a big empty expanse in pretty much every direction. Uh, and we're coming up on sunset time. So this is when people tend to head to the beach and this is how few people are here. We saw no cars on the road. You can watch the entire video. We're gonna put it on drive warp so you can see every inch of it. And there's just practically nothing. There's almost no businesses here. There are a handful of nice, modern, beautiful homes. There's a number of old rundown things. There's like one or two restaurants. There's like a hostel. There's practically nothing here. We're gonna go back and explore and try to find someplace to at least sit and get coffee or something. But this is a remote community. If you're looking at coming out here, you're definitely looking at a lifestyle. Whether if you're just coming out here to visit the beach, great, come out, enjoy a beautiful beach for the day. Uh, or if you're, if you're coming out here because you're considering Salinas Grande for a place you may wanna live, really think through carefully do you want to live completely remote uh the uh, the beach community is very clearly an extra and harrow one with the the foreigners owning on the sand and just behind them being a very poor fishing village uh, of of nicaraguense and then the road leading here is a an extremely poor area uh coming through salt fields and a lot of them definitely see the video uh, and we're going to be putting this up also on the 360 channel on Nicaragua 360 uh, so you can get some just nice views of the area and see what it really looks like. But uh, you really have to consider just how remote you might want to be. There are huge advantages in being remote. And some of you, when looking at coming to Nicaragua, you're excited about getting away from it all. You're tired of civilization. You're tired of people. You want to live on a beach and be like Gilligan and, and the skipper and, uh, and, and just hide right, and get away, and, and that's what you wanna do. Perfect, this could be great for you. It is a lovely beach. <coughs> the sound of the water is incredible. The view of the waves is fantastic. There's so much sand. There's the estuary to add interest. Uh, it's, it's a remote area, so you know, you're pretty secure. There's all kinds of great advantages to it, and it's, I don't know the pricing out here, and it's probably all over the place because you're dealing with such a small number of transactions, such a remote community. It's gonna be whatever they can get for whatever property you see. But if you're looking for an escape, this could really be it. For, for someone who's looking for something isolated, you don't wanna be around other people, but what few people you are around, you want them to be Americans and Canadians, That's then this could be a beach for you. Uh, but it is like 45 minutes minimum, and you definitely need to have a truck in order to get to and from Leon. So keep that in mind. This is nothing like living in Las Bonitas and Ponaloya, where you're effectively part of the city and you're able to go back and forth and do anything you want all the time, and you're, you're just integrated into the city, but slightly outside. They feel like distant suburbs of Leon. This feels like a deserted village on the edge of civilization, even though it's not physically that far. So incredibly different looks and feels. And, and uh, you know, in, in Las Bonitas and Ponaloya, there are loads of restaurants and hotels and, and nightclubs. There's always something to do, even if it's a slow night, there's something. And I'm sure there's something here in Salinas Grandes. We've not found it yet. What we have found is absolute emptiness. 
Uh, and even walking on the beach here, I see not a single person. There may be people extremely far down there, but they're so far away, I can't actually identify that they're living things and not just sticks. Uh, so this is, this is very different than what we're used to in the northern beaches. I'm glad we came out here and are investigating it. There are a few things for sale, uh, and even things that aren't for sale are always for sale. So that's something to consider. But this is very remote, but very austere and beautiful as well. And you can tell, we're gonna, I'm gonna do my best to film some of it, but don't get your hopes up, because uh, it's very difficult because of the light. Uh, there are some really nice, I mean, seriously nice modern houses that have been built out here. And I know people who've come out here to build. So I know that that is a thing that people are still doing. Um, and if you want to just build your own, you know, ultra modern house on a beach and get away, this is a place that other people are doing that, so that's a tried and true uh, method here. Uh, whereas in Las Panitas, we really don't see that. Could you? Of course you could, but you're much more likely for whatever reason to blend into the community a bit more and build a more traditional home. Out here, you really don't have that community. It's just an loose association of foreigners living along the beach. Uh, whereas in Las Panitas, we are predominantly Nicaraguense with a good number of foreigners mixed in. So that gives a very different feel to the beach. Uh, whereas here, I'm sure there are some Nicaraguense on the beach, but they are few and far between. This is definitely an expat beach. And we think of it as people who live in Leon, as people who live in Las Benitas, we think of Salinas Grandes as an enclave. It is not, it's not like San Juan del Sur. It's not like Granada. It is just a tiny, absolutely tiny, barely uh, populated beach. Um, so that's different. But what few people are here are mostly foreigners who are looking for the experience of being near other foreigners. Whereas in Las Panitas, Ponaloya, it is uh, foreigners who don't want to be without foreigners, but do want to be part of Nicaraguan society. So you get very different feel from that perspective as well. One of the things I notice about this beach compared to Las Benitas, and this is a very personal feeling, but in Las Benitas, I tend to feel like the sea is small, if that makes sense. It feels very closed in, probably because there are so many businesses and so many houses cheek by jowl, and you, you tend to have this long line view into the ocean, and then the just the way you approach it, there's always something to the side of you. So you never get the big expanse of ocean like you do here in Salinas Grandes. This is just what I think of when I come to the ocean. I used to, when I was a kid, I always went to uh, Bar Harbor in Maine, a lot of time in the New Hampshire or Massachusetts coast, a lot of North Atlantic, big, harsh, severe beaches and, and rocks going into the ocean with a, with a heavy ocean, as we say. This somehow here feels like a much heavier, much more aggressive ocean as the Pacific is supposed to be, right? The word is that it's the it's the peaceful ocean, but the Pacific is actually uh, one of the rougher seas. And here you feel that, you really get that vibe from it. But when you're in Las Benitas, rarely do you get the same feeling. So I'm, I'm enjoying that. I like the difference that you experience here uh, at the beach, um, but it's very much going to like and this is what i liked growing up going to the north atlantic and being very very remote gave you this very solitary very tranquil feeling and again in las Benitas, we don't get that so much because there's always music there's always a, a bar there's always a business there's always people like always this is empty and quiet there's no music playing there's no bar to go to there's no flashing lights there's just the ocean and the sand yeah there's nobody uh, and, and so this is a very different beach experience completely, like absolutely a different thing. So this is our visit to Salinas Grandes. We're going to drive back through town. We're going to see if there's anything we can find, maybe find something interesting, maybe not. But I did want to mention this just comes up. We talked about this the other day on a video about how, what is there to do in Nicaragua? Is there enough stuff to do when you're here? And this is a great example this week for us, whether it's Marcel and I or uh, Camille or, or Chris or whoever, like we've been traveling around, we're doing a lot of different episodes, getting, I, I think a good variety of stuff for you guys, because I have a little bit of, of time with uh, the family away and just, and the kids have been wanting to go do stuff a lot. So it's just a lot of different things going on from cafes to volcanoes, whatever. And in the past week, roughly, been to Managua several times. We've done done the shopping in Managua, which is its own kind of adventure, gone out to restaurants. We've gone to the theater at the National Theater. 
uh, been on drives through volcanoes, been to a hotbed, the, the thermal vents of volcanoes, been to Hinotepe, been to uh, Matagalpa, been to Chinandega multiple times, to the museums, to restaurants. We've been to multiple different beaches, done drives all over the country. Uh, so many different things. I can't even think of all the things that we've done just in the last week. And, uh, and really, we haven't even taken any amount of time to do anything with nightlife. We've been out to cafes a couple times, because mostly because the kids really like coffee. But, uh, you know, mostly when people are looking for things to do, they're talking about live music, they're talking about dancing, they're talking about, you know, nighttime activities, not just the daytime adventures. There's honestly so much, it, this is just such a good week to be like, how could you be bored here? The biggest problem that I have is there is not enough hours in the day to go do all the things I want to do. I also have the issue that I'm trying to record them for you guys, and that requires that we have sunlight, uh, so that actually does lower my hours in the day. I really like to get up in the morning, and I like to spend my morning editing and doing uh, video work, which is terrible, because really what I need to do is jump up, throw cameras in the car, and get on the road, film all day, and then edit at night, but... Uh, I just, I don't feel it, right? So I like getting up and editing in the morning, um, getting some coffee, gauging what material I have. Then once I've kind of loaded my brain for the day, then working on getting people out the door. Uh, and like today, the whole day was essentially set aside to go out and film. And what happened? Well, we got up and uh, it took forever to get the kids out the door, had to deal with a bunch of stuff, did some editing, got some things done. Uh, but it was noon before 1230 before we even walked out the door went, tried out a new restaurant, uh, which, which of course requires a lot of driving around. Things do tend to be pretty distant from each other here, so that's just a factor to be aware of um, if, you're, you know, if you're doing exploration like we are, right? Like Salinas Grandes, we wanted to come here today. We spent the whole day wanting to come here. The sun was getting low by the time we headed out. There's just not enough time in the day. Well, I don't know how it happens, but just getting lunch and doing all the stuff, we have to drive somewhere, get in the car, takes time. But it just, just this week has been such a good example of so many new experiences, so many new places, and I've lived here for years, right? I know you guys see it as I've lived here for two and a half years on the vlog, but I was first here in the country eight years ago, and I did a ton of stuff back then. I went and saw the volcanoes, I went and saw lots of different cities, I really did explore the country heavily when I lived here before, and uh, so for now, it's be years in to be going out and just constantly finding new things. Um, oh, and exploring La Paz Centro we did just the other day. Uh, and, and we went to uh, 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 Leon Viejo, and we went to Porto Mumbo Tumbo. All these new places, so much in a week. If you're gonna mix in normal life, if you're gonna go see a band play, you're gonna spend an easy, easy evening just having dinner at home, you're gonna watch some reruns of Star Trek or Seinfeld or Friends or How I Met Your Mother, you're gonna binge the latest show on Netflix, you're going to uh, maybe just take a night and, and sleep in, you're gonna go out and go dancing. You mix in any amount of that stuff, you gotta play some video games, whatever, suddenly you have a lot of time. What we did in one week could take you six months uh, if you add in normal living with lots of activity to keep you busy. So uh, I just wanted to say, yeah, I, I don't think you're gonna get bored. It is, there's so much to do. It is such a beautiful country and everything is so much more affordable. That's, I mean, we said this in the, in the boredom video, but when you're in the United States, every little activity is so expensive. Even if you make a lot of money, you have to really think about every little activity. Oh, do I wanna get a beer? Can I afford a beer? Like it's terrible. Can I, can I afford to go get into this park? It's so expensive. Here we went to the race, oh, we went to the races, oh my gosh. And that was 90 cents, 90 cents for two people, 45 cents each, that was it. The, the ideas, like the, the thought process of can you go out and do things? Yes, you can go out and do anything you want. Do you wanna to go to cafes? Do you wanna to go to restaurants? Do you wanna go see live music? Whatever the thing is that you want to do, if it exists, and it probably does, it's affordably accessible to you. That's what makes it so different. Of course, the United States, Canada, they're loaded with things to do. Loaded, of course. But those things are so expensive that you can't just bounce from one to another. You can't do one every night. You can't just make it a thing that you do. So you have to supplement with nights at home and eating you know, frozen Stouffer's dinners and watching TV because it's cheap. But here, you can order in great food every night. You can have a private chef. 
you can just jump in the car and go do amazing adventures. You can go explore a new city. You can go check out a volcano. You can go see a show. Whatever it is you want to do, chances are you can just go do it and do as much of it as you want to fill your life with. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the show, check above. I'm going to put a link. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me. It's like Patreon. It supports the show, helps us get cameras and trips and makes all this possible. It takes a lot of time to do this. I hope you guys understand how much effort goes into this. And I know a lot of people have said it. I know you guys appreciate it. But this really is, it's a huge part of my day uh, between recording, getting play. I mean, this is three hours just to, to get the logistics of being able to record, then the time recording, and then it'll be many hours editing it to get it up for you. Uh, and, and, and file management. Wow, it's so crazy. But I love doing it. But that sponsorship, that helps make this able to be done at the pace that we do it. And if you're looking for support, someone who used us for relocation is booking a house today for his year, uh, his first year in Nicaragua. So that's really exciting. If you want help, whether it's looking for a house and it's Marcella that does a lot of the looking for houses, a lot of the work that we do with Relocate Nicaragua, it's Marcella who does it. And so you can find us at info at relocatenicaragua.com. Whether you just want to talk to me and get some information, you want some guidance, you need a tour, you need to look at houses, whatever, we can help you with that. Send us an email, let us know. And uh, as always, like, subscribe, get down in the comments. What do you think of Salinas Grandes? Is this cool? What? It's amazing, gorgeous, but is it for you? Is this going to meet your needs? Is it something you even want to visit when you're here? Let us know. What do you think? And if nothing else, just say hi. Like, it's a cool community. Share with your friends, put it on social media. I will see all of you tomorrow.